So in today's video, we're going to be ranking the albums by Striper. I have 12 studio albums. I'm not going to include uh, the covering from 2011. That's a covers album. And I'm not including Second Coming from 2013 because that's kind of just like re-recordings of earlier material. So I have 12. Let me uh, jump right into it. At number 12, I have Against the Law, released on October 21st, 1990. So on this one, they uh, kind of moved away from their whole like uh, Christianity thing. And it was like glam metal, funk metal, reminded me a lot of the band like Extreme, maybe some Van Halen, like that type of music. This one, uh, it really never uh, clicked with me. I think like they were trying to reinvent themselves. They changed the logo. The, the cover art was very different. And it just actually wasn't a successful album. They uh, split up right after this album. And um, they didn't, weren't going to release another album for like another 15 years after this. But, and I remember when this one came out, uh, I think I was watching it on MPV or something, and they were uh, talking about how they changed uh, their style, and the interviewer asked, uh, so isn't like um, money the root of all evil in Christianity? And they were saying, no, in Christianity, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. So, you know, trying to make money is fine. I, I, I have a clear memory of that interview. So anyway... Basically, uh, the, the same members, Michael Sweet, Oz Fox, uh, Tim Gaines on bass, Robert Sweet on drums. Uh, a couple of good songs. Two Time Woman, that's probably the main song. And uh, they have a cover of Shining Star, which an Earth, Wind & Fire cover. And I don't really like that one that much. But anyway, and number 11 is Reborn, released on August 16th, 2005 on Big Three Records. This was originally a Michael Sweet solo album. And it had like a different sound, more a little bit of new metal, some hard rock. Um, this was their first studio release after like 15 years. So pretty much the, on the band, uh, Michael Sweet, Oz Fox, uh, Tracy Ferry on bass, and Robert Sweet. They're going to be like changing bass players like throughout this whole you know, time. Now some key songs, Reborn, that's kind of like a heavy song, Make You Mine, that's a decent one. But I think overall, it was meant to be a Michael Sweet album, so... It's not as good, but it's decent. It has its moments. In number 10, I have In God We Trust, uh, released on June 28, 1988, through Enigma Records. This was the early period, more of that glam metal. Um, you know, it's the same members. That actually, they have. it was Michael Sweet, Oz Fox, and Robert Sweet, and they used a session basis, so, so they didn't have a bass player. Um, Tim Gaines uh, would actually be uh, rejoining on the, um, on the tour, the In God We Trust tour. This one, um, it, it has some good songs, but it, it's very, I guess it's kind of light. That's how I would describe it. I think uh, the good songs are Always There For You and I Believe In You, but overall, it's typical glam metal, but it's okay. At uh, number nine, I have their debut, The Yellow and Black Attack. It's an EP, but I'm including it. At least on July 21st, uh, 1984 through Enigma Records, uh, this one has more of a raw sound. Uh, sounds like hair metal. For some, it reminds me of kind of like Dokken, like that type of metal. And this is uh, the original band, uh, Michael Sweet, Robert Sweet, Oz Fox, Tim Gaines. And you got the song uh, Loving You. You got uh, Loud and Clear. It's decent, not very long, but it has some good stuff. At uh, number eight, I have Soldiers Under Command, uh, released on August 23rd, 1985, through Enigma Records. Another one, straightforward glam metal. I think this one is a little better than uh, the Yellow and Black Attack. Same uh, lineup, and uh, it has some good songs. Uh, Soldiers Under Command is a good one. The Rock That Makes Me Roll, and they have one of those ballads, uh, Waiting for a Love That's Real. So, this one is fairly consistent. You know, you got some good stuff, but overall, um, it's just not like an overall, like, very really great album. The other ones are a lot better. So at number seven, I had Murder by Pride, uh, released on July 21st, 2009, through Big Three Records. So this, I feel, is the album where they kind of, like, discover that, like, new sound, that new modern sound that we will know with all of their later releases, which... I basically have like all the up in the front of uh, my discography because those are the ones I like the best. But Murder by Pride, it's pretty good. They have a different bass player, Tracy Ferry. Uh, he does bass and back backing vocals. Uh, 
Best songs are Four Leaf Clover. That's a really good one. The the song Murder by Pride. That one's really good. It has those like those metal riffs that they're going to be like using a lot throughout their like later albums in the more modern period. And they also have a cover of Peace of Mind, uh, that original song by Boston, which is okay. That one brings the album down a little bit. But I think in, in general, this is a very uh, consistent album. It, it's very good, and it kind of shows them moving towards that new modern sound. And number six, I have The Final Battle, the new one, released on October 21st, 2022, Frontiers Records. Uh, this one's very good. It's consistent. It's you know the same style as uh, they have been doing over like the past like 10 years or so. It's, um, it's good. I just... It's ranked here because I guess I haven't had much time with it, but there's lots of good stuff in here. So the opening track, Transgressor, very heavy song. Got those really great, like, Rob Halford-style screams. Uh, See No Evil, Hear No Evil. That's my favorite song because they incorporate these, like, deep purple-style keyboards. And Ashes to Ashes, that's another very, like, heavy song. That's like, at the end of the album. But I think, in general, the album is very consistent. It's heavy. It has that modern style but i just have it here i haven't spent a lot of time with it so that's why i have it here and number five um to hell with the devil released on october 24th 1986 through enigma records uh this in my opinion is their best album from their early period it's uh very consistent you got um the the three members michael sweet oz fox robert sweet and they used a session bassist on on this album Lots of good songs. Uh, to Hell with the Devil, that's a classic. We got Free, you know, that's got kind of like a power ballad. The Way, that's a really heavy rocking song, really great uh, metal riffs on that one. Uh, then two ballads, uh, Honestly and All of Me. I think those last two ballads are just very, like, soft and ballady. I think uh, that might have uh, brought it down a little bit, but this is just a very consistent album, and it's definitely their best of their 80s period. So I got four more to talk about. Uh, number four, No More Hell to Pay, uh, released on November 5th, uh, 2013, through Frontiers Records. Uh, this was the album where they really like solidified that modern sound. It's it's a lot heavier than their 80s stuff. I've said this in videos before. You know they have a style that's a little more close to like Judas Priest, as opposed to that glam metal of the 80s. You got uh, Michael Sweet, Oz Fox, Tim Gaines, and Robert Sweet. So th those are the core members at this time. And lots of great songs. Uh, no More Hell to Pay, really good. It has kind of like uh, some slow riffs, but it's really heavy. They have a cover song, uh, Jesus is Just Alright, which is an old like gospel song, but it has been covered over the years by a classic rock band such as The Birds and The Doobie Brothers. And I think in general, it's a consistent album, there's uh, lots of uh, really good songs in here, and it's heavy. It has that straightforward heavy metal sound. At number three, I have uh, Goddamn Evil, uh, released on April 20th, 2018, through Frontiers Records. Uh, this is this is a very like heavy album. I think this is probably like their heaviest uh, throughout their entire discography. You got the three members, uh, Michael, Robert, and Oz, and they use a session bassist again. You got the opening track "Take It to the Cross," which was the first single, and that's a very heavy song. It's this is like near like thrash metal, in my opinion. It's just lots of heavy riffs, fast drum beats, and just lots of energy. And then you got songs like "Sorry," which is you know typical modern striper, very melodic uh, chorus that sticks in your head. It's just a very memorable song. And another one, The Valley, another one, just a straightforward, heavy metal song, typical Striper style, and just one that I really like a lot. So that's my number three, Goddamn Evil. At number two, I have Even the Devil Believes, uh, released on September 4th, 2020, through Frontiers Records. This is another one, heavy metal sound. This is their second to last album. Also like the first album I ever re reviewed on my channel when I first started my channel, so... I do have a little bit of a bias towards it and in that respect. Um, this one has the, the core members and it has Perry Richardson on bass. So he's kind of like, like the new guy here. We got songs, uh, Blood From Above, that was the first single. Very melodic, very heavy, great riffs on that one. Divider, and that one they get like really heavy. I think they have these like really chunky riffs. In my original review, I remember comparing them to like Metallica. 
I, I, I like that song. It's very heavy. And the last one, Middle Finger Messiah, kind of a very, uh, I guess, maybe controversial title for a Christian band, but it's very good. It's a, this is just a very consistent album, just like front to back, no skippable songs, everything's good. But it's not number one. I think my number one was just like a little better. And that's Fallen, released on October 16th, 2015, through Frontiers Records. A very consistent, heavy album. They, they have that like core sound, that like straightforward metal sound. You got the, um, the members, Robert Sweet, Oz Fox, and Michael Sweet, and Timothy Gaines is in the band at this time. Lots of great songs. Opening track, Yahweh. Very powerful song, just great lyrics. Great vocals on that one. Then you got Fallen, another one really great uh, guitar work in that one. You know, super awesome and uh, great riffs. <laughs> and they have a cover of uh, After Forever. That's the Black Sabbath cover, and um, kind of interesting because you know th that has always been like talked about as being like one of like the first like uh, metal songs that kind of delved into like the some like Christianity topics. So. This is uh, just a very consistent album. It's heavy. All the songs are really good all the way through. And that's my number one. So that is all. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, this is just my ranking. If you want to change anything, what would you put higher? What would you put lower? Put it in the comments. And that's all. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one.